Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Elementary has announced earlier that the second Juno developer preview is now out, so I wanted to take a video tour. It comes with all the usual warnings, it is not ready for prime time use and not supposed to be installed on your production machine. It's geared towards developers for them to test out their apps on the new system. But this time it also comes with a warning towards reviewers and press. Do not review this system yet since not all changes are final and these reviews might not reflect the quality of the final distro. Obviously, I'm still going to talk about the changes announced in this developer preview too, but this is not a review. I won't be talking about stability, usability, I will not detail every change since Loki. If you want to know more about these, head to parts 1 and 2 of my video tour of the first beta. This being said, let's take a look at the improvements that have been added to this new preview. App Center The App Center has been greatly improved on Juno. Some issues have been fixed to ensure that all apps display correctly, uninstalled apps can now be installed correctly without restarting the App Center, and the team also has added a few compilation flags to allow reusing App Center in other distributions more easily. The red badge appearing on the docs icon is now correctly displayed, and banners on the App Center homepage have been improved with a glow based on the brand color, which improves legibility and adds a nice touch. They also have improved the payment dialog with a new icon, auto formatting of the card number, and hiding the CVC field when the window is not focused to improve privacy. Look and feel. The elementary OS style sheet has been revamped as well, with subtle touches here and there. Tabs now have an inline style available to make sure they match the content they are switching between instead of having the same color everywhere. For example, code uses this style by default. Contrast has been tweaked again to make sure everything is nice and legible, notably on checkboxes and radio buttons. And the newer, more vibrant color palette has been applied to more icons across the whole theme giving a more consistent feel. These changes are not immediately noticeable, but if you're a regular Loki user, you'll see brighter touches here and there that really make the theme look more pleasing. Folder icons have been changed to a light brown manila color. I personally don't like this change and prefer the blue folders, but I understand the logic behind it. The color is more neutral and allows the team to think about integrating colored folders down the line. Folders will now appear open when you drag something into them or when they are opened in another browser tab. Elementary has retired the previous Walrus wallpaper and replaced it with a Kinda OS X Leopard S Green Fern wallpaper, which looks good as well. Photos. Photos has seen a lot of code cleanup, most notably on the application's dialogues, which have been moved to the Granite library to look more consistent with the rest of the system. The adjustment dialog now uses the GDK color sliders to give a feel of where the color temperature, tint or highlight will be moving towards. Plus, it looks absolutely beautiful. Finally, there is a fit to page option to avoid too much zooming in and out while viewing photos. Code. Code uses the new inline tab bar style, and it looks great. It even changes with the color theme you use. Code now integrates with Git, displaying the current branch next to the current folder name, and a status icon has been added if there are uncommitted new or modified files in the repo. Trailing white space is now always drawn by default, making it easier to see where your indentation is messed up or where you have added unintentional spaces. The team also has added a few keyboard shortcuts to make commenting easier, as well as toggling the sidebar on or off. Settings. A few problems manipulating displays in the settings have been fixed, most notably concerning the handling of a display's rotation. The team has added a new housekeeping setting to the security and privacy pane to tell the system to delete files that stayed in the trash for too long or delete temporary files. You can define the time period between each cleanup. You can now switch off event sounds in the sound settings and a few other settings have been fixed such as touchpad scrolling, suspend settings on laptops or incorrect labels in the universal access pane. Panels and indicators. The panel now only goes opaque when the maximized window is on the same display as the panel. The date and time indicator has seen a slight redesign to better distinguish between the current day and the selected day in the calendar. Finally, the brightness slider in the power indicator stays in sync with actual screen brightness when using the brightness keys. Other changes. These are only the most user-facing changes, but there are a lot of other new things and fixes. Over 200 bugs have been squashed compared to the first developer preview and over 50 applications have been added back to the App Center, which shows the interest from app developers. A lot of high DPI fixes have been added as well, with better context menus for applications, improvements to picture-in-picture -picture scaling and the login and greeter screen. The drag to or from the panel gesture also now works reliably on high DPI displays. These improvements continue making Pantheon one of the best suited desktop environments for high DPI displays. 
The new keyboard shortcut overlay can now be hidden by pressing the super key a second time when it brought it back up in the latest developer preview. A lot of work has been put in internationalization. With better keyboard input methods, the addition of the Noto typeface to handle international fonts, and a lot of updated and new translations. Files now had a slash symbol added to the end of the pathbar to allow us to type more easily a path, and has seen improvements to thumbnailing, performance, and stability. To complete this tour, Music also has seen a lot of code cleanup and bug fixing, with fixes for a crash that I have been experiencing when restoring the application. So there we are with the most prominent changes in the second developer preview. As I said before, this is just a video tour, not a review, I just wanted you guys to be able to have a look at what's coming. Please read the Elementary OS Medium blog post carefully before you decide if you want to try out or install this beta, I will leave a link in the description of the video for you to read. If you want a more complete look at all the new features in Juno, you'll also find in the description a link to part 1 and 2 of my guided tour of the first developer preview. I couldn't be more thrilled with the work the Elementary OS team has accomplished for this new version, and I am looking forward to the final release to publish a complete review of the system. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching, and bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!